Welcome back to the flip class. Today we're going to continue on with measurement, but it's not the same kind of measurement we've been working on. We're not going to use rulers for this. We're going to talk about line plots, okay? And today we're going to introduce line plots, okay? Line plots also help us measure, but they help us measure responses, like in, in terms of a survey, okay? Or if you asked a bunch of questions and then you wanted to make sense of that information or that data, you might put it in a line plot, and that's exactly what we're going to do, okay? Let's jump right into it. This is a very basic line plot, okay? It doesn't really tell us a whole lot of information. I just wanted you to see it. And a line plot always has a title. The title will always tell us what the information is, okay? And you'll see that in a second. Down at the bottom, it's either the numbers that we use, okay? Or in some cases, it can be, it can be used to show different information. We'll see that also, okay? Here's a better example, all right? If we wanted to do a line plot, and we're gonna take a poll, okay? And we're gonna talk about how many pets that we have, how many pets we have in the class, what would our uh, line plot be called, okay? It might be called something along the lines of class pets, and that would be right at the top. So you have a title, so anyone who looks at this knows that it's the class pets, okay? Down at the bottom, we have the numbers that are going to be used, okay? And I, for one, have one pet, a dog, all right? And if I was gonna put myself on there, I'm gonna mark an X above one. So right now, without any other information, you can look at this and see class pets. One person has one pet, okay? Now, if I asked a student how many pets they had and they said, Mr. Quick, I have three pets. You don't mark three X's. It's not an X for each pet. You mark the response above the appropriate number. So if a student said, I have two cats and a dog, so I have three pets, I'm gonna put an X above the three, okay? If I ask another student and they say, well, Mr. Quick, I also have three pets. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna mark another X above the three, okay? If I ask a, a, another student and they say, Mr. Quick, we live on a farm. We've got nine animals with nine pets. I'm gonna put one X above the nine, okay? Let's stop there. Typically we do the whole class, but this will be enough for right now. You could put a whole bunch of X's on here, okay? Right now, looking at this line plot, it tells me a lot of information. It's just some numbers and some X's, right? But it tells me a lot of information. I know that one person in the class has one pet. I know that there are uh, two people, because there's two X's, two people in the class that have three pets. And I know that one person, because there's one X, one person has nine pets. The X represents the person. The number represents how many pets they have, okay? So if I asked you, how many pets does the whole class have all together? I know this person has one, okay? That's one. I know two people have three. Three plus three is six, okay? And I know one other person has nine. So if I added that together, I would know that, the, that this line plot tells me there are 16 pets between all the, all the kids and the teachers in the class, okay? Whoops, just jump back. Here's another one, okay? This is one that doesn't use numbers, okay? So it uses uh, data. Okay, so if I ask, okay, what's your favorite color out of these colors, okay, because I know some kid would say fuchsia or something weird, right? So we're going to say red, green, pink, orange, purple, blue, okay? If three kids said, I like red, I like red, I like red, I'm going to put three X's above red, and each X represents a person, okay? If one kid said, I like pink, put an X above the pink. If you had two people that said they like green, I'm going with two X's above the green. No one likes orange, no one likes purple, but a whole bunch of people like blue. So I'm gonna put one person, two people, three people. We'll say that four people like blue, okay? This is my class. You might say that's some X's, that's some, some colors. What do we have there, Mr. Quick? Well, you've got a lot of information because one, I can tell you right now how many people were in the class. How many X's are there? How many people answered? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten people in the class that responded to this survey, okay? If I said, what is the most popular color? Well, you could say, well, three people liked red, because there's three X's, two liked green, one liked pink, four people liked blue. So the most popular color is blue. If I said, what is the least popular color? Well, you look at the data and you've got to say, it's your brain might be thinking, well, pink only has one, but remember, look, orange and purple don't have any, okay? So you'd say, well, it's a two-way tie. No one likes orange in that class, no one likes purple. At least they don't like it as their favorite color, okay? There's a whole lot of data. 
Now, if I asked you what fraction of the class thought green was their favorite color, could you answer that? You sure could. How many kids like green? One, two, okay? How many kids are there total? Well, we already figured that out, there's 10. So you would say two tenths of the class chose green as their favorite color, all right? How many people answered the survey? Well, we figured that out, 10. Most popular color was blue, we figured that out, okay? Uh, can we do one with measurement? Yeah, what could we measure, okay? What about the length of our pencils? Tomorrow, this is what we're gonna do in class, okay? So what you can do tonight, or first thing in the morning, if you don't have your ruler handy, measure your pencil. And if you say, Mr. Quick, I've got 10 pencils, pick one, right? All right, pick a pencil, measure it. We'll figure out the title, okay? And we'll figure out why these numbers wouldn't be the best numbers to use for that. And that's what I want you to think about and I want you to tell me tomorrow. Why would zero through 13 not be the best numbers to use for measuring a pencil? Think about what we know about measuring, rulers, the numbers on a ruler, and the numbers we have to play with here, okay? This will be something we do the next time I see you in class. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you can bring those to me. You can watch the video again. See ya.